it would be great to hear from you, you know, really what, what is collective grief and um, how is it something that is for us to be, to understand what's happening with coronavirus? So kind of in the wake of an event like a natural disaster, um, an act of terrorism, war, um, when there's a kind of collective loss of some sort or a collective experience, there can be this kind of community-wide expression of, of grief. When we think about the loss of a loved one, right, that loss in a typical family will permeate kind of the nuclear family, the spouse, the kids, the parents. When we think about a loss that's on a much larger level, right, um, when there is mass loss, you end up experiencing those expressions of grief kind of in ways that kind of permeate culture in many ways. So today we're noticing that more people on larger scales and larger communities are sort of connecting um, along the lines of this experience um, in a way that we've never seen before. That can just feel like camaraderie. It can just feel, there are a lot of words for that, you know, camaraderie, um, support, um, just connection. Um, and so I think what we're saying is that on a psychological level, that is a manifestation of actually this sense of collective grief. And so why do you think it's important to label this experience as grief? Well, I'm a clinician, I guess, by trade. And so what I've really noticed um, a lot is that people cope better when they can make some kind of sense as to what they're experiencing. As clinicians, the reason we kind of engage people around, hey, here are the stages of grief is because after a lot of studies and understanding of like, you know, different populations, there's a sense of, hey, if one can get through those stages of grief, one can kind of experience that sense of closure and that sense of being able to process and move on more effectively. With everything going on, would someone have those same, I guess, uh, steps or processes of grief with everything going on with coronavirus? You know, when we think of an example of people still going out to bars and going out to social situations, kind of even, or gatherings, I should say, um, even after being told to shelter in place, you know, that could be construed as people just not understanding what the implication of what's going on or potentially, um, you know, not believing it or just not being able to grapple with the huge implication of staying inside. What does that mean? My life could affect the lives of many others and others could die. One, it may be hard to believe that, but two, what does that mean for my daily life now? That means I can't go outside. I can't see my friends. I can't do the things that I would, I can't go to my exercise class. All the things that I would typically do to kind of cope with the stresses of everyday life, I can no longer do. And that is a loss. And as we talked about, loss can lead to grief, right? Any kind of loss can lead to grief. And so we see people in these different stages, those who are in denial, right? still going out, still doing their thing. They may know what the news has been saying, but they still want to keep doing what they're doing because they just can't necessarily accept or uh, deal with the fact that it's a reality. There's people who are angry. I mean, that's what we've seen a lot of, right? I think there's been a lot of anger on social media, on the news, in articles, um, around with our own friends, right? Around like the frustration that comes with having to stay inside and kind of completely alter your way of life, which again is a huge loss. There's bargaining. People who are like, well, I'll stand six feet away from you, only outside, at the park. You know, you kind of create these conditions um, around which you can still get, kind of find the loopholes and figure out ways of still doing your thing, still being yourself. Depression, where, you know, people, there have been a lot of memes out there, right? Of like the different stages of, of coronavirus, like uh, seclusion. And those are, I mean, I love them because I think visuals, I'm a very visual person, and I think those visuals kind of capture it so well. But there is that visual of, you know, just people lying in bed being like, okay, now, now that I've actually realized what this means, I just feel helpless and overwhelmed. There's also this idea of acceptance. I don't know um, in this case kind of what acceptance really looks like, but I do think that people in the healthcare field, for example, I, I, I'm not going to say they're accepting what's going on, but I would say they are for the purposes of being able to actually do their job every day. They kind of have no choice. And so they may be accepting the reality of the situation kind of by force, but that might mean that they end up going through the other stages of grief at various points in time, even you know during their shifts, like during the work. I think it's really hard for people to actually know what exactly they're grieving along what time span, right? It's like, if I told you, hey man, like for one week you can't do X, Y, and Z, you'd prepare yourself. You'd be like, cool, I'm gonna mentally prepare for not having access to the gym for one week. If I tell you you're not gonna have the gym for four months, right? But you live in a small apartment, you don't have any access to, you don't have access to parks or ways of kind of getting outside. The gym is your only sort of refuge for physical movement and activity. That's actually a huge imposition, which you only realize kind of after you have a, take a second to actually think it through and think about like, how am I going to get through it? 
Even more importantly, if someone tells a family that, hey, this is gonna last for one week, cool, I can make do. I can feed my family of like, you know, two kids, myself, my partner, maybe a older loved one you're taking care of for that period of time. But when you extend that to maybe one month, maybe two months, maybe three months, right? Just it's to take a second and just like put yourself in the shoes of that person and conceptualize like all of the various things they have to account for. I mean, not having that sense of timeline is just leads to that much more uncertainty and anxiety and also leads to just one more thing that they're losing after the other, right? Um, as time goes on. And I think that's super difficult.